नमस्ते सरस्वती देवे गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पश्चात्य देश तारिणी ओम ज्ञान तिमिराद से ज्ञाना जन सलाकया चक्षुर्मील तमेन तस्म श्री गुरव नम श्री चैतन्य मनोभीष्ट स्थापित मेन भूतले स्वयं रूपकदा ददा स्वपदाक वंदेगम श्री गुरु श्री उत पद कमल श्री गुरु वैष्णवा सागर जात सखगन रघुनादान्वित तम सजीव साइद सवदूत पिजन सहित कृष्ण चैतन्य देव श्री राधा कृष्ण पादा सखगन ललिता श्री विशाखान्विता हे कृष्ण करुणा सिंधु दीन बंधु जगत्पद गोपेश गोपिका कांत राधा कांत नमोस्तुते तप्त कांचन गौरांगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी विषवाणुसूते देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रिय वाछाकर्भ्य कृपा सिंधुव्यये वतिता पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम श्रीकृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभो निनंद श्रीयदगदावर शिवा सादिगौरभक्तवृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे ईश्वरा परम कृष्ण सच्चिदानंद विग्रह अनादिरादिर्गोविंदाण कारण हरे कृष्ण बै दि कास्ट मेसी ऑफ द सुप्रीम पर्सनालिटी ऑफ गॉड एड श्री कृष्ण वी आर नाइसली स्टडी भगवदगीता एंड वी हैव फिनिश्ड सिक्स श्लोक इन द फोर्टीन चैप्टर ऑफ भगवदगीता सो दट इज द थ्री मोड्स ऑफ material nature in this chapter krishna is giving us all the knowledge we need to know about the three modes of nature in fact many chapters krishna is teaching us about the three modes of nature even as i mentioned previously like 17th chapter even the 18th chapter first uh, half of the 18th chapter also krishna is teaching us about the three modes of material nature the entire 17th chapter also so in this 14th chapter also completely so this is this itself is a very important topic in fact we can produce thousands of uh, phd's on this thousands of uh, research papers on this it's so such a big important science this three modes of material nature we need to know because we are constantly controlled by these modes of nature we are forced to act helplessly by these three modes of material nature so always always under force we are never free actually so only we can free ourselves only by studying this bhagavad gita surrendering unto krishna otherwise we are always under the control of these three modes of material nature but krishna is teaching us about them in detail in this chapter in the in the 14th chapter we understand about how each mode of nature is binding us and what is the effect of the each mode of material nature and uh, different things what we are studying and understanding so arjuna asked just only one question about what is prakriti so in the 13th chapter in the first shloka he asked prakriti purusha kshetra kshetra gnya gnana and gnyaya so for that krishna is devoting this entire 14th chapter to explain about what is prakriti so prakriti means this three modes of material nature prakriti gunas gunaha prakriti sambhavaha prakriti jay gunai so this gunas the three modes of material nature are produced from prakriti so they are born of prakriti so this this modes of nature are controlling us binding us and forcing us to struggle and suffer in this material world so when we get this bhagavad gita knowledge fully and understand it completely then we realize that krishna is the supreme personality of god and we understand very well that we are foolishly in this material well attached to material sense objects and we are simply wasting our life and we are simply struggling and suffering in this material well for no reason so that kind of knowledge will become very very clear when we understand this entire bhagavad gita In fact, we already studied in the thirteenth chapter. Krishna has said that realizing that we are struggling and suffering, realizing that this birth, old age, disease, and death, 
so these are our real problems so that is what is called knowledge if you don't know this fact that means we don't have knowledge so we need to realize this important fact we need to understand that we are struggling and suffering in this material world so that's what is called knowledge gnana so this knowledge is the weapon of knowledge with which we should destroy the our doubts which are which have arisen in the heart so this is hritastham so in the heart so agnana agnana sambhutam samshaya samshaya means the doubt so which has arisen in our heart so we need to destroy with the gnana sinatmana so with the weapon of knowledge ृष्णाजुन टू डिस्ट्रॉय दिस this doubts which has arisen in our heart which have arisen in our heart with the weapon of knowledge so chitvainam samshayam so yogam atishto uttishto so we should destroy this chitva chitva means we should destroy this samshayam samshayam means the doubts which has which is which has come because of this doubts have come because of ajnana sambhutam because of ignorance so that way as long as we are under ignorance if we if we don't have knowledge of this bhagavad gita as long as we have ignorance so we will be doubtful and we will be struggling and suffering because of such doubts we don't know what is right and what is wrong and we will develop our own faith our own knowledge all such things because when we are bereft of knowledge so kama is says there hritagnana so hritagnana means when we are uh, bereft of the knowledge there is no knowledge so kama is stays there because of the desires because of the desires to enjoy desires to enjoy this material well so when we don't have any knowledge so at that point of time we don't know that krishna is the supreme lord so then we take shelter into other gods demigods and surrender unto them and develop our own faith and follow our own way of worshiping them all such things will happen kama is stays there स्वयाग so our own regulations our own way of worshiping our own faith all these things that's why people have different faiths different different way of worshiping gods without having the knowledge that krishna the supreme personality of god is sri krishna who came to this well just 5000 years ago who was in this well and who gave this knowledge of course he is also now in this well everywhere and he is there situated in our heart also in everyone's heart also only thing is that we are not able to see with our our senses because he is avyakta but 5000 years ago when krishna came krishna appeared at that time you were able to everyone was able to see krishna face to face that is the difference we are we are now we are not able to see krishna face to face krishna is there krishna is able to see us but we are not able to see him. krishna is watching us all the time krishna is listening to this bhagavad gita every day the supreme personality of god is shri krishna this bhagavad gita as it is what we are studying he is also listening to this class listening to this lecture the same knowledge what he has given us and he is standing next to us He is sitting inside us. Bahir anta scha bhuta na. So bahir and anta. So bahir means inside. Bahir means outside. Anta means inside. Bahir anta scha bhuta na. So Krishna is outside and inside. Krishna is there everywhere, and Krishna is all the time watching us, seeing us. Upadrishta, Anumanta, Bharta, Bhokta, Mayeshwaraga. So all these things are happening. But if we don't have this knowledge, so that's the problem. 
the problem is that if you don't have this knowledge that krishna is there with us if you don't have this knowledge that krishna is the supreme personality of god so then it's a real problem for us then it's a real struggle and suffering for us if you don't realize don't understand that we are controlled by the three modes of material nature so that means we are fools that's it we cannot claim that we are intelligent we have knowledge if you don't even understand if you don't even know that we are the soul we are not the body if you don't even understand that we are all the time controlled by the three modes of material nature then we are fools that's it that's what krishna calls us in bhagavad gita vimuda vimuda krishna is calling us vimuda vimuda means fools only a devotee who has the knowledge of bhagavad gita who understands that krishna is the supreme personality of godhead who realizes that we are controlled by the three modes of material nature so that person is amuda he is not vimuda he is amuda amuda means he is not a fool so that's why krishna calls him as amuda whereas we in this material world in general if we don't have the knowledge of bhagavad gita if we don't realize that this body is temporary this is just matter of time so we everyone is going to die we are going to lose everything so we are gaining to lose everything so time is running out and the days are going days are numbered our days are numbered everyone's days are numbered we don't know when we don't know when that date the date we are going to leave this body we don't know the date we are going to we will be kicked out of this body we don't know but the days are coming the days are numbered so that is the fact for everyone everyone that's what we need to know no one can stay here forever and no one can enjoy and rule this world and enjoy forever even though we may aim we can aim we may aim but it's not going to happen so this bhagavad gita knowledge is such a very important science that we is opening we are actually getting the eyes of knowledge it's opening our eyes of knowledge with which we can see the things with which we can see the world as it is so that's why it is called gnana chakshusara we should be able to see this world with the eyes of bhagavad gita knowledge we are very fortunate to get this knowledge to study this bhagavad gita understand this bhagavad gita as it is we are krishna's mercy we are very gifted we got this opportunity which we are actually effectively making use of this opportunity that's what is very important we are not losing it we are going to we are going to go to krishna there is no doubt even if we fail in this life even if we don't control our mind in this life if you are not able to fully control our mind in this life still we are also going to go to krishna because we will come back and again continue from where we are living that's what is going to happen prapya punya kritan lokan ushitva shashvati shaman ushitva shashvati saman suchi naam simatam gehe yoga prashtu abijay so we will go to the world where pious beings are living and then we we'll live there as if it is permanent as if it as if it is permanent and then again come back to this well and take birth in a rich aristocratic devotee's family devotee's house and then we will continue from where we where we we are living in this life from where we left so that way it is guaranteed that we are all going to go to krishna it is guaranteed it is guaranteed that we are going to completely completely forget this material world detach everything from this material world it is guaranteed only thing we don't know when it is is it this life or next life or few lifetimes or more lifetimes we don't know that all completely depends on how much we are able to surrender unto krishna that's what is very important. even this life itself it is possible 
निर्दोषम हि समं ब्रह्म तस्मात् ब्रह्म निस्थितग इन दिस लाइफ इट्स अ इहैव तैगि जितग सर्गो ये साम सामी स्थितम मनग फॉर दोस हु आर एबल टू कंट्रोल देयर माइंड सामी स्थितम मनग सो हु आर एबल टू हैव अ अचीव द स्टडी माइंड सो हु आर एबल टू कंट्रोल देयर माइंड so for them ihaiva 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 means iha iha means this so this this life itself ihaiva taigi jitaga sargo jitaga sargo means we can conquer the birth jitaga sargo we will be able to conquer the birth in this material world so that means we don't have to come back to this world that's why yesam samye sitam so we will become equal to brahman nirdoshami free from all faults समम ब्रह्म समम ब्रह्म मीन्स इक्वल टू ब्रह्म निर्दोषम ही समम ब्रह्म तस्मात् ब्रह्मणी ते स्थित देफो देवा दे आर सिचुएटेड इन ब्रह्मन सो तस्मात् ब्रह्मणी ते स्थित सो दैट इज पॉसिबल इफ यू आर एबल टू गिव अप ऑल अटैचमेंट्स all material desires if you are able to give up then it is very much possible vikaya kamanya sarvan pumam charati nispragah nirmamo nirakankarah sasantim adigachati sashantim adigachati when when we are able to get the ultimate happiness when we are able to give up the desires so we need to understand only when we are able to give up all varieties of desires then we are able to get ultimate happiness the supreme happiness supreme peace ultimate peace of mind supreme peace of mind sa shantim sa shantim adhikachadi shanti means peace so we will be able to get the peace of mind when we are able to give up the attachments to the material material uh, subjects material sense objects <clears throat> so pumam sarati nispraha if you are able to live in a desireless state that's why pumam sarati nispraha nirmamo nirahankara so not claiming any proprietorship and free from false ego nirmamo nirahankara sa shantim adigachati we are able to get the supreme peace of that opportunity is there for us we just have to make use of it get this knowledge fully understand it completely follow what krishna says in bhagavad gita and simply live as per krishna's instructions and then our life is going to be very very beautiful wonderful peaceful blissful we are going to enjoy this is the real enjoyment otherwise so called material sense enjoyment is simply suffering only because mind is not peaceful mind cannot be peaceful when we have material desires because mind will be all the time agitated chanchala chanchala means agitated restless chanchala restless unsteady flickering that's what is the nature of our mind in this material world so no amount of material gains in this world is going to keep our mind peaceful make our mind peaceful the peace of mind cannot be bought using money by using money we cannot buy we have to derive that peace of mind within ourselves we have to find that peace of mind within ourselves it is there within ourselves not from outside from outside you cannot go and buy peace of mind. so we are so fortunate that we are able to get this kind of knowledge we are able to understand we are able to realize so by chanting hare krishna maha mantra by focusing our mind on krishna that is by fixing our mind on the transcendental sound vibration we will be able to achieve the peace of mind 
because when our mind is connected with krishna when we are able to establish that secure connection with krishna so then our mind is going to be very very peaceful and then we can be very very blissful so if our mind is peaceful then we will be blissful we will be happy if our mind is not peaceful then we will not be happy at all so that kind of knowledge we are very clearly getting from this bhagavad gita so now in the 14th chapter we finished sixth shloka last uh, class krishna taught us about the what is the effect of this sattva guna tatra sattvam nirmalatva prakashakam manamayam suka sangena badnadi jnana sangena chanaka so this sattva guna because it's pure nirmalam nirmalam means it's it's not uh, like uh, it's pure it's not dirty it's pure so that's what nirmal so tatra sattva nirmalatva prakashakam anamayam so it is it is illuminating and it it is free from sins it free us from sins anam then it binds us to happiness sukha sangena badnat and it binds us to knowledge jnana sangena chanaka o sinless one cha anaga anaga means o sinless one so krishna is addressing arjuna that o sinless one this sattva guna is actually because it's so pure that it binds one to happiness and knowledge what is the effect of the rajoguna so in the next shloka what we are studying this shloka number 7 in the 14th chapter krishna is teaching us rajo ragatmakam vidhi trishna sanga samudbavam tannibadnati kaunteya karma sangena dehinam rajo ragatmakam vidhi you understand vidhi you know you understand that rajoguna is actually produced from uh, sanga samudbavam and it is born of raga the attachment the attachment so because of our our association our sanga our association with this material sense objects because we are attached to material sense objects because of that we come under the control of the rajoguna that is the mode of passion that's why rajo ragatmakam vidhi trishna sanga samudva dhyayato visayan pumsaka sangaste supajayate this sanga this sanga this sanga is means attachment so this sangaste supajayate so when it comes when we focus our mind on the sense objects dhyayato visaya vishayan means the sense objects so if you focus on the sense objects so if you meditate on the sense objects so then we will be actually developing attachment we will develop attachment to those sense objects then we already know in the second chapter we studied krishna says that in this shloka number 62 and 63 sanga sanjayate kamaga kamat krodo abijayate krodat pavati sammogaga so krodat pavati sammogaga all those things we studied so here krishna is saying that that rajoguna is produced when we focus our mind on the sense objects so that's why in krishna also says in the third chapter kama yesa krodha yesa rajoguna samudbhavaga see rajoguna comes because when we have desires to enjoy so when we have desires to enjoy so then what is going to happen then we will come under the control of the rajoguna the mode of passion so from there sangha sanjayate kamaka kamat krodo abijayate so kama and kroda develops lust and anger krodat bhavati sammoga sammoga smriti vibhramaga smriti bhramshat buddhi nasho buddhi nasat pranasi by contemplating the objects of the senses a person develops attachment for them from such attachment lust develops from lust anger arises from anger delusion arises from delusion memory is bewildered when memory is bewildered intelligence is lost so when intelligence is lost one falls down into the material pool so that's what is happening when we have attachment when we have desires 
to enjoy the material sense objects so then we will come under the control of this rajoguna that's why rajo ragatmakam vidhi trishna sanga samudbhavam tan nibadnati kaunteya karma sangena tegena so it binds us to it's to work in this well karma sangam karma sangam see satvaguna is jnana sangam sukha sangam sukha sangam jnana sangam sukha sangena badnati jnana sangena chanaka so the mode of goodness binds us to happiness and knowledge whereas the mode of passion the rajoguna binds us to work in this material world so then because of that why people will be very passion passionate to work do this do that running after the material things not finding any time just going after so many things in this material world and simply losing our life precious human life we cannot waste we cannot miss we cannot lose we need to effectively use this material this human life in this material world so that we can get out of this material world so that's why here it binds us to work karma sangena the the mode of passion is born of unlimited desires and longings o son of kunti and because of this the embodied living entity is bound to material fruitive actions so that's why people who are very passionate they will be going after lot of things and that's why in this material world we are not finding enough time to sit and relax we are not finding enough time to sleep uh, very stressful all the time in fact in reality people don't find enough time to even even eat even even eat peacefully we will be eating very fast because of not having time or or talking and eating all those things we are not even able to enjoy the prasadam what we are eating the food what we are eating if we offer to krishna and make it as prasadam and then sit uh, uh, and relax and then honor it that's what we should do but in this material when because karma sangena because we are bonded to work so people do ugra karma ugra karma that's what the demon demoniac activities there is ugra karma we study in the 16th chapter krishna uses the word ugra karma so by krishna's constant mercy we have successfully finished the shloka number 7 in the 14th chapter of bhagavad gita hari krishna so we will now chant one round of hari krishna mahamantra to focus our our mind on krishna to fix our mind on krishna so that's what is very important so while chanting this hari krishna mahamantra our goal is to sit straight don't look at any other directions and when we chant the hari krishna mahamantra just focus our mind on the transcendental sound vibration so krishna says in the 6th chapter in bhagavad gita that yatho yatho nischalati manas chanchalam astiram tatastato niyamyate atman eva vasam nayat from wherever the mind wanders due to its flickering and unsteady nature one must withdraw it and bring it back under the control of the self so when we chant this hari krishna mahamantra when we focus our mind on this sound vibration so when the mind goes somewhere again bring it and focus on that sound vibration when the mind goes somewhere again bring it and focus on that sound vibration so that's what we are supposed to do so we need to watch when chanting this hari krishna mahamantra we need to watch where our mind is going so mind is going somewhere bring it and again focus if we keep on doing this and if we, if we get experienced in doing this then our mind won't wander anywhere hari krishna namo om vishnu padaya krishna prashtaya